So I was asked if there is a relationship between spiritual health and long levity. Um, for people who um, read, for instance, um, the Bible, uh, but also in other cultures, uh, scriptures, there are often stories of people who live to a very old age, you know, but are still very active, very potent individuals. Now they easily live to 150, 250, sometimes even 400 years old um, in a human body. One of the thoughts is often that we die too young because, well, if this person in biblical times could live for 400 years, why not me? What's wrong with me? There must be some kind of a spiritual disease or something happening which is causing me to uh, to die young, even though you might be a 90. Um, well, yes and no. The first thing to, um, um, to think about is what is causing us to have a certain lifespan. Why do some people die when they're 30, when other people linger on until their 80s? And the answer to that is often that it is a matter of karma. So our spirit has a mission, has an idea of what it wants to do in life. So it yeah, assembles a set of, uh, of skills to work with. It also has a set of goals it wants to achieve. And it is born with this motivation. And once these goals start being accomplished, then the motivation tends to, well, die out. So the second chakra also tends to weaken because there's nothing to be left to desire anymore. But as a result of the second chakra weakening, then also the life force weakens and the person dies. So you could say that from birth we have a programming how much we can achieve before dying. And of course, if I'm a complete idiot and I yeah, have to try everything at least 10, 20 times before I finally succeed, then it will take me quite a long time to finish my task. And I might grow to a very old age. While if I'm a very good student and I get everything right in the first or the second try, then I might die at a much younger age, even though I start with the same type of program. So that you live to an older age it's not necessarily a sign of spiritual health, it could also be a sign that you're basically not growing very rapidly or very easily. And this is often also actually why people reincarnate, because even at the end of their life they still haven't finished learning or transforming themselves the way they intended to. So they'll have to incarnate again and again and again. And I've met a person who had to reincarnate more than 90 times and still hadn't learned what he had to learn. So this was a very tricky lesson for that person and he was also not very disciplined or not very focused on learning that lesson. So then you have to keep on being incarnated until you're done, basically. <clears throat> there are of course also other options. So when a person runs out of their own programming, then they can reconnect to their spirit uh, or they can reconnect to some other spirit who might grant them an additional purpose. So your own spirit might decide like, gosh, well, instead of waiting uh, for this body to die and to reincarnate again, maybe there are more things which can be done with the current incarnation and then the life will yeah, take a turn or take a twist and some new directions will be followed, some new things will start happening and you will have a new yeah, agenda of uh, items to do in your, uh, in your current incarnation. So that can give you a kind of a, a second wind in your life. Another option, if you yeah, have no more purpose for uh, living yourself, is that your spirit leaves the body but another spirit enters the body. So then you have a so-called walk-in or a blend-in. So another spirit enters which also has its own agenda and again the body has an agenda to stimulate its life force so the body can keep on living and this can actually happen several times that spirits enter the body 
to reinvigorate it with their, uh, with their impulses, with their agendas. It is also possible that the original spirit remains in the body, but yeah, becomes invigorated by, for instance, a higher power. Who uh, This can be a saint or a deity or an angel who yeah, gives them a mission, a quest to accomplish in this life. Work on this, work on that, and these can be also long-term missions which can take several lifetimes to accomplish. And um, often when a person has received such an impulse, uh, these impulses are so strong it actually becomes a part of the long will. I've talked about the long will in other videos. This is actually a part of our willpower which will carry on from one incarnation to the next. Um, so if you're in a way done with your life, you then consecrate your life, you give your life to another power, um, that other power will then yeah, um, give you a mission or a purpose and that mission or the purpose which will then guide you in that life is often also strong enough to carry on into future incarnations and because you have such a strong power pulling you and stabilizing you in between incarnations also you will tend to retain a lot more of your talents um, when you reincarnate so on the one hand it's a sacrifice you are in a way putting yourself uh, at the service of this other power but this other power also helps you uh, to build up your experience and uh, helps you to preserve your talents and to grow to, uh, to greater heights in your incarnations. So if we look at these biblical times where people used to grow much older, um, one of the things is also that now we have a very big information density. Things happen to us all the time. Uh, we are bombarded with new ideas, new thoughts, new concepts, new energies even all the time. Um, so we are constantly adapting, we are constantly growing and in a much more yeah, stable, impulse-free environment as they used to be um, in ancient times. And of course the growth process would yeah, happen much slower so it would, for a person with the same type of agenda, take much longer to achieve the same results as we are sometimes able to do in our current incarnations. One of the downsides of the times we live in is also that our spirit can simply get exceedingly frustrated because we are born with this desire to become enlightened, to yeah, gain communion with, uh, with higher powers, but we are overwhelmed by all these lower impulses like um, sex, drugs and rock and roll. Um, I have to make money, I have to pay my rent, I have to pay my insurance, I have to think of my career, la 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 la. And these are things which are of zero interest to our spirit in general, unless our spirit is coming from a very low vibration. Um, but most spirits, being from a higher vibration, they have no interest in these earthly matters. But if these earthly matters take up like 95% of yeah, all the time and all the life force, then there is actually very, very little growth happening. And the spirit can yeah, basically pull the plug on a project which is not working out. Um, like any project management project, fail half the time they usually cost twice as much time and twice as much money to deliver half the, the expected results. But if we look at our lives as projects, we actually score worse than that. Most people have a lot of um, impulses when we are young. Our spirit wants to achieve lots of things. But I would say yeah, 80 90% of people get completely bogged down. And then the spirit becomes demotivated, and if the spirit becomes demotivated, also the second chakra weakens, and the body starts to develop yeah, uh, health problems and will die more quickly. So it is important that, should you want to, uh, to live long, um, that you don't go too fast, but also don't go too slow, because if the spirit is demotivated, it will uh, yeah, ultimately demotivate you and uh, end you 
uh, it's also important to keep that um, yeah, young person attitude of being enthusiastic about things, about desiring things, about being willing to immerse yourself, to maintain curiosity um, about new things. So you need to have that flexibility which will allow you to grow, which will allow you to transform. If you become too crystallized, too set in your ways, as happens as we grow older, as our brains mature, as our brains get more um, yeah, programmed by their environment, it will become harder and harder to achieve that transformation, that deep growth which our spirit is, is striving for. So ultimately the vehicle um, becomes less and less able to provide us with that uh, rapid growth which is so uh, stimulating to our spirit. But we can work on that with our own attitudes to keep our spirit satisfied and if our spirit is satisfied also it will try to help to keep our bodies going. Also it is a lot harder for our spirit to keep our bodies going because now we have a lot more uh, pollution, chemical pollution, uh, stress, um, radiation pollution, electro smog, also energetically the world is much much more polluted than it used to be. Um, so the spirit has to expend a lot more energy just to maintain a relatively healthy body than it used to. Um, and this is also something which is in a way shortening our lifespan because you could say the relative benefit like how much is the spirit getting out of it in forms of growth and how much energy and time does it have to expend to maintain the body. So the cost of living is a lot higher now for the spirit than it used to be. So it will also, yeah, uh, the spirit will then also be more inclined to pull the plug because it will expect more out of life to make it yeah, in a way worth its while. Um, the last process we should uh, be talking about is also zombification. Because sometimes the spirit yeah, is not actively pulling the plug, but also not actively trying to guide the body, like they're in kind of in sleep mode. And this is what I call zombification. So the person is in a way running on automatic pilot, usually because the spirit is relatively inactive. The energy body becomes very polluted, it will attract lots of yeah, lower entities, other spirits which are in a way guiding the body or using the body to have experience they would like to have, um, carrying out acts they would like to carry out. So the person is in the way um, like a remote controlled car with several friends just switching who has to control and the person is not really being guided on a spiritual level by their own spirit or by other powers, but rather just coasting along on the currents which are in its yeah, uh, physical, social environment or in its uh, spiritual environment. This often happens also because the spirit itself is relatively weak and therefore it is also not very capable of uh, controlling the human body, the human impulses. Uh, it has a very limited amount of self-discipline, self-control and this makes it also very yeah, vulnerable to these energetic parasites. Um, these energetic parasites can have a detrimental effect to the health, but they can also protect the person because they want to keep um, yeah, their toy running. So they will often also perform maintenance, protection, healing and stimulation of the life force. Um, but often these stimulations tend to be of a very low grade. So the person might be very interested in money, in sex, in food, in drugs. And all these desires will of course keep the life force flowing because they stimulate the second chakra. Um, but if the second chakra is only filled with these low impulses then the body will keep going but the spirit won't develop. So then I would uh, yeah, call this uh, yeah, a case of zombification. So I hope that this has given you some insight into how lifespan relates to uh, spirituality and the health of the spirit. Thank you for listening and if you like these videos uh, 
maybe also visit our website www.forgottenway.club and maybe hit the donate button or better yet become a member.